now we need to calculate out our months of cover. So this gets a little trickier and we, and we need to think about this. So if we're looking at the packaging step and we want to know how many months of cover we have in the inventory that's currently at the packaging location based on forward looking consumption, we want to make sure that we're applying that inventory to the demand that it's actually going to satisfy. So if there's a couple of months of inventory at the distribution center already, and let's say demand was decreasing or increasing, well, the, the inventory that's at the packaging center may be supplying, may be in place to satisfy a demand that is several months out and is actually greater, which would change what the months of cover calculation would, would show if we're using this consumption-based approach. Uh, or if it was obviously a decreasing demand, you know, that inventory at the packaging site would be matched up with some quantity of demand further out in the future that might be at a much lower level and thus show a higher, let's say, months of cover in our, in our case. So to really figure out exactly what we have in terms of months of cover, we're going to use that periods of cover function again. Yes, periods. And what we're going to do is we're going to say we want to figure out what the total inventory is of what's in the packaging site and what's in the distribution center, which is this. And we want to compare this to the demand, which is here. We'll do 12 months. And then that's going to give us a number. Oops, sorry about that. All right, that gives us a number, but that gives us a number for the inventory coverage of the combination of the two inventory quantities. What's at the distribution center and what's at the packaging site? So to figure out what's left at the packaging site, let's just subtract out. The value that we calculated here. So you know you have 1.8 months of cover for this particular SKU at the at the packaging location and we'll do the same thing here for the other finished good now you notice this is zero so this should return uh, a zero inventory coverage but let's make sure that that works out that way and then minus out the inventory level that's in the distribution center and that leaves us with zero. So that all works out nicely. So now you can kind of see exactly what inventory level you have at the packaging site. And it's matched up with the appropriate demand further out in the future. And then you can see steady state, once things balance out, it's going to maintain two months of inventory at this packaging site, which is really just a function of the lead time that we've modeled. So that, that all works out nicely. And then we can do the same thing for the aggregation field. So this plus this. and we'll subtract out that aggregation quantity all right so we start off with 1.2 months of cover at our packaging site and that should build up to a steady state of two months which it does, or roughly does, depending on the mix. Yeah, so that works out pretty, pretty good. And then we'll do the same here for the aggregation in terms of API. Okay, so we got that done. So that's how you go about modeling the packaging step in the supply chain and then linking it up to the, uh, the distribution center for the finished goods that it, it supplies.